Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Falcon. In this one I'm excited to share with you a first look at the 24th Infantry Division. This is one of two new divisions that have been recently announced that will be added to Warno and available to everyone who has purchased Warno during early access so big props to Eugen for doing that. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump on in. This of course is work in progress and therefore subject to change. Let's start off in the Logistics tab, I'm going to go through all the tabs, we'll throw together a quick deck and we'll see how we get on. So this uh, division is actually kind of interesting because it has quite a lot of National Guard in it, uh, which kind of portrays more of a playstyle similar to some of the Soviet divisions uh, that other sort of NATO divisions don't do. Uh, so we'll get to that later, but starting in the Logistics tab, we have the M35 Supply, of course, this is a US division, so the M35 is here. And we have 10 of those available for 20 points apiece. They bring in 500 supply. Then we have the M548A2, which is a new supply vehicle. Looks very cool. And it comes in four available at 40 points with 1,250 supply. It actually goes faster than I expected off-road and on-road. Uh, actually gets up to 80 kilometers per hour on-road, which is kind of speedy, really, for a track vehicle. Then we have the UH-1H Supply, which is a cheap supply helicopter, kind of useful for supplying things like AA or mortars in the back line, but honestly otherwise will kind of run out of supply pretty quickly for those things. Uh, but a cheap option, which gives you a decent amount of availability. Then we have the UH-1A ACP, which is your standard command helicopter, pretty slow might be able to sneak a back line cap with one of these uh, but generally would be used for back cap so like early caps of back sectors and we have the m151 mutt cp which is your standard jeep command really really fast on road a good cheap option for capping then we have the m577 cpc which is your armored command and then we have the armed armored command which is the M2A1 C Bradley CP, which comes with the Bushmaster Cannon and the TO2. The TO2 is really, really strong. 25 penetration is huge, and it gets really decent accuracy because it comes in at decent veterancy as well. So I would definitely always recommend this over the M577, unless you're just going to go the cheap option uh, and get more availability, in which case just bring the Jeep. So that's my recommendation there but field supply point is available as well for 235 points moving on to the infantry tab now this is where what i was talking about earlier with the military police and then the, like the national guard is going to come into play so we have the military police units that have the military police trait which grants a suppression regeneration bonus to surrounding units and also removes the unsteady trait on national guard units they have the unsteady trait so you the idea of this division is to use the military police in combination with the National Guard in order to get the best benefit out of them. But let's just go through the military police units first. We have the military police leader here which gets the security trait. The security trait when they are stationary makes them better at recon so their optics will go from normal to good and therefore they'll be able to spot things slightly better when they're stationary. So 7 M16s, 4 M14s are their loadout. Uh, the accuracy and so on are pretty standard for those weapons. They don't get any sort of negative buffs and you can actually bring them in at relatively high veterancy. And then we have the military police patrol. These are a five-man squad with 4 M16s and M60. Uh, these can be dotted around quite nicely and they do have the military police trait so considering how many you get of them these can be probably your primary source of the military police trait for your other units since you get so many on a card you get 12 on a card for 15 points apiece there's also the military police with the m67 recoilless a five-man squad with the recoilless and the recoilless always nice to have um, does chip away at larger tanks because it uses a heat round. So basically what that means is it will always do at least one damage to the front armor of a tank. 
And then we have the standard military police unit, which is a 10-man squad. They get five M16s, three M14s, and two M60s, which is a decent loadout of weapons, to be honest. Um, and for 40 points, it's okay, but availability is just a little bit low. Then we have uh, the first of the National Guard units, the National Guard on the M60. So just a machine gun squad for 15 points. You might also notice that they come in with the poor experience. So you might want to get a military leader or a, sorry, military police nearby. And then obviously give them a leader as well so that you give them the veterancy uh, on top of taking away the uh, reservist trait. Um, because the reservist trait is basically the unsteady trait, uh, which causes them to take more suppression in combat. So this is the trait that the military police remove. Anyway, moving on, we have the M60 squad, which, which basically is not unsteady. And then we have 50 cows available as well. 50 cows are actually pretty decent at the moment. Then we have the National Guard fire team leader. These come with three M16s, three M14s, and the M72 Law. They are unsteady, um, uh, but they do get the IFV infantry trait because they can be brought in with the National Guard M2 uh, Bradley IFV. Now, the National Guard vehicles also get the unsteady trait, which can be taken away by the military police, so do bear that in mind. Uh, I know that some of this might sound a little confusing, but uh, yeah, that's how it works. Uh, then we have the National Guard Fire Team Law, which is a six man squad uh, with M16s, M60s, and the M72. Can also be brought in with the M2 Bradley. And the nice thing about the M2 Bradley, of course, is it does get a tow launcher. In this case, it's only a, an I tow rather than the tow 2. Finally, there's the National Guard Fire Team Dragon. Uh, the Dragon. In this case, only 32% accuracy if we compare it to the 40% accuracy of the normal engineers. Uh, that is uh, quite a bit lower. And uh, you're going to need some veteran seats from another leader to kind of bring that up. So this is where like the, the military police leader could actually come in handy just for improving both leadership and also providing the buff of the military police trait. Uh, but yeah, again, can be brought in with the M2 Bradley IFV. Then we have the standard fire team leader, which comes in with the M2A1 Bradley. And you can see where you're probably not going to be using too many of these National Guard units, except for potential uh, like cheapness and also availability. Uh, so, yeah, the standard fire team leader, they get M16A2s and two Colt Commandos. It's only a three-man squad, which is not too great for a leader, to be honest, because it's only going to take, like, one artillery shell to wipe them out, um, or, like, a stray bomb. But, yeah, the M2A1 Bradley is something we're going to look out for here as we move on to the fire team lore, which comes in as a six-man squad, four M16s, two M249s, M72, and they can be brought in with the M2A1 Bradley. So they get a decent sort of loadout of weapons. And then they also come in with the support of the M2A1. So that's really cool. Uh, better than those are the fire team with the AT4. Because the AT4 is just better than the law. So 17 penetration over 13 penetration with extra accuracy is huge. So the AT4, really, really nice AT weapon. And again, comes in with the M2A1 Bradley. And then we have the Fireteam Dragons, which come with the Dragon 2. And the Dragon 2 is way better than the standard Dragon. Uh, you can see the difference if we click on the Engineer Dragon to the uh, Fireteam Dragon here. So we get extra accuracy, get 10% extra accuracy, and we get 4 extra penetration, which is a massive difference, especially when you're hitting those sweet side shots. So this is actually a pretty damn good squad, plus the Toe 2 that's given by the M2A1 Bradley. Really nasty combination, so you're probably going to want to use them quite a bit. And then we move on to the Engineers. The Engineer Leader is a five-man squad. Um, can only be brought in with a Jeep, so bear that in mind. Not otherwise not too great. Uh, they do get the Shock trait, though. This is something to consider, which means that they 
basically inflict more suppression when fighting at close combat ranges. And that can be really, really handy. Uh, we've got the engineers. These are just a standard close range infantry squad. Nine M16 A2s with an M60. And they have the satchel charge. Basically, you want to run at your enemy. Uh, you get like a speed buff from the shock trait as well, which is really, really handy. I'm pretty sure the shock traits like reduce damage at close range or something, unless I'm getting confused with Star Division 2. But um, either way, they move faster at close range, which is really, really cool. And uh, they're able to get those satchels on target. Then we have the engineers with the flash launchers. Uh, napalm, always good fun. <laughs> If used against your enemy, at least. Um, shock trait. And, yeah, definitely a staple of the close range. You can see you're going to get one card of them because they're pretty decent. Uh, just bear in mind that you will need to give them supply quite frequently to make sure they have enough of the flash launcher ammo to keep going uh, when they're pushing forwards. Finally, there's the engineers with the dragon squad. Um, the dragon here is kind of trash, so... Unfortunately, this squad doesn't really make the cut, but uh, 10 strength M16 um, squad. They can put damage out at medium range against other infantry. Then we have the tow squads. So we've got the National Guard tow squad, which is just a standard tow for 16 penetration. Uh, absolutely garbage. 2,625 meter range for 50 points. Mm, not convinced. I tow, same range. But 20% more accuracy and 4 more penetration. Nice upgrade. Finally though, you do get access to the Toe 2, which is the 25 penetration. That is a solid plus 5 penetration from the Ito. With an extra 5% accuracy on top. Really, really nice HGM. Then we have the Error Rifles. And these can be brought in with the UH-1H Huey, which is a pretty slow transport. So don't be throwing these towards the enemy too much. Uh, but maybe you can make use of these early on or potentially do some like flanking maneuvers or something with them. But otherwise, a 10 strength squad with 8 M16s and 2 M240Bs. Uh, I think these machine guns might be pretty decent, but either way, pretty standard squad. It's M72 Law mm, and a trash uh, AT weapon compared to something like the AT4. All right, let's move on to the artillery tab. So in the artillery tab, our standard infantry mortar is a 107 millimeter with the 1.1 he and 5625 meter range useful for kind of harassing enemy units and sort of chipping the health off tanks and vehicles uh, obviously doing damage to infantry but probably more useful for smoke purposes but better than that i would probably suggest bringing in either the m25 M125, sorry, mortar or the M106A2 mortar. Now, in this case, the M125 it gets the 81 mil, and the M106A2 gets the 107 millimeter. The 107 millimeter, it just has that extra damage that really makes quite a lot of difference. Um, so, definitely my preference in this case. But if you want more availability, maybe you want more smoke, then the cheaper variant, you might as well take that. Now we have the National Guard M109A2, which is basically a poor veterancy artillery piece. So it gets a nerf to its aiming time rate fire, as you can see, and that is really not good. <laughs> the, the rate of fire is really important because you want to be able to fire off all your shots and move before counter battery comes in. So whilst you do get more availability out of the National Guard M109s, uh, they are going to be more prone to counter battery. Uh, so do bear that in mind. Uh, then finally we have the M270 MLRS. Uh, these M270s actually got buffed recently quite significantly. They got reducing price by like 80 points to match the Eurogun on the Soviet side. So definitely going to see a lot more use uh, since the last patch and uh, probably something that might be worth considering here. Moving on to the tank tab. We have another of the National Guard units. This one is a Jeep with an Ito on it. So it's 20 penetration, but you're kind of losing out a lot on the accuracy because they come in with the 
poor experience. And the way that these are used is usually quite isolated. So they're not going to be near any unit that has the military police trait or the leader trait. Same goes for like the artillery. Um, it's quite rare that you're going to have a military police unit by the M109s because the M109s are going to want to move after they shoot all the time and running an infantry squad after them is going to be kind of irritating. Uh, although you could technically put it on a follow command, but generally you're going to be driving out of range before you're firing. Uh, regardless, the fact it's a National Guard unit and loses the extra accuracy on the ITO might make these a little lackluster, but the quantity of them might make up for that. Especially if you bring in like three or four just to engage a tank um, that costs 200 points, right? Then you're you're potentially going to trade up quite well. Moving on, we have the M901 ITV. This is the ITO on the M13 hull. It's the standard 20 penetration, but this time with the 60% accuracy because it's not a National Guard unit. And then there's the M901A3 ITV, which has the TOW 2 on it. Now, the thing that lets these down is the mediocre stealth. If you look at the Jeep here, it has good stealth. Another thing that might make these more beneficial than their armored counterparts. So do bear that in mind. The stealth gives these guys away a lot and uh, often causes their death. Uh, then we have the M728CV, really good infantry support tank, has the 165mm cannon plus the two machine guns, uh, really really solid infantry support tank if you can fit it in. Uh, then we have an M1 Abrams command tank, uh, the standard M1 Abrams has the 17 penetration 65% accuracy gun with 50% accuracy on the move, um, 15 front armor, pretty solid stats. Uh, for 215 points, this is actually a, a reasonably good uh, command tank, I would say. And then we have the National Guard variant. And you can see how, once again, the poor experience really affects these tanks in rate of fire, aim time, accuracy, all those stats that like really matter in ongoing uh, tank engagements. The benefit, of course, being is these are probably cheaper than normal M1 Abrams and you get more of them on a card. So you can get eight of these on a card. And honestly, if you have a leader by the M1 Abrams here, you're gonna move up from that paw to the trained, which is going to basically standardize the accuracy that they're missing. So you charge forwards with eight of these bad boys and you have one command tank nearby that just like covers them all, then you can really like create a wall that's going to do a ton of damage. So um, there is definitely application for spamming out these M1 Abrams from the National Guard. And then we have the M1 IP variant. The M1 IP uh, basically just gets more armor, I'm pretty sure. Um, does it get a better gun as well? I don't think it does. Uh, but it definitely gets the better armor. And you can see that these are not National Guard units. So 17 front armor, 7 side armor is actually quite a nice uh, increase from the 15 front armor that the standard M1 gets. But yeah, the M1 IP, better front armor. And in this case, um, this M1 IP is not National Guard, so it doesn't get the accuracy penalties and uh, rate of fire and reload. So there's the leader variant, 235 points, and the non-leader variant which is 205 points and there's three cards available of these so a lot of tanks available in the 24th infantry then we have the recon and we've got first of all the national guard scouts now this is uh, an application where buying national guard units is actually kind of useful uh, because you don't really want these sorts of units to be engaging the enemy so it doesn't really matter if they are reserve units uh, all you need them to do is provide their very good optics. So having a 25 point spammable recon unit is really, really nice. And you can also bring them in uh, with a recon Jeep, which can also be useful for dotting around potentially. So a nice unit to consider for sure. Uh, then we have the standard scout unit. In this case, they can be brought in with the uh, Jeep as I showed before, but also the M113A3 ACAV. Now this M113A3 ACAV gets an upgraded recoilless rifle with 17 penetration, which is very significant 
um, it can do a ton of damage, uh, especially in side armor. So a nice vehicle to have around, plus the machine gun support against infantry. Really, really big fan of the M13A3 ACAV. You can also bring them in with helicopters. Then there's the sniper squad in their ghillies, which is really, really cool. Uh, M14 sniper and an M24 sniper. They have slightly different ranges, so do better in mind to get the most out of these in terms of damage. You're going to be want to, uh, you're going to want to be at the 850 meters. But generally speaking, you won't want to engage with these because they are extremely good spotters. Uh, they are very sneaky with the exceptional stealth, and because they're a sniper, they get the extra stealth level and accuracy when not moving. So that stealth level of exceptional goes even higher and their accuracy um, is really good as well if they do get spotted and have to engage. And you can see they get like 500% damage bonus or something. Yeah, regardless, they're pretty good uh, to have it around. And then we have the recon variant. Uh, of the M13 with the big old unit on the top, which is just a, a massive camera, I suppose. M981. Um, it's a 35 point recon unit. I'm surprised this doesn't have exceptional optics. It's only got very good. Then we have the M150, which is an M113 with a tow missile on it. 45 points. It's only got good recon and it gets spotted really easily and its toe kind of sucks, so not something I would consider. OH-58C Scout comes with a minigun, cheap recon air, uh, like recon helicopter option, uh, six on a card, pretty nice. Then we have the Kiowa with the rockets, um, kind of too expensive for the payload that it has. Uh, 14 rockets is not <laughs> going to make a huge difference, uh, so yeah. It does get exceptional optics though, which is a pretty big upgrade uh, from the other OH-58 scout, but you can see that we get less availability because of that. If you want to go all the way, you can go to the OH-58D Kiowa with the Hellfire missiles, and Hellfire missiles are pretty cool. Uh, very, very good, 70% accuracy while stationary, and 24 penetration, which is nothing to scoff at at 2,800 meter range. So in a pinch, you can use these to take out heavily armored targets. But otherwise, you want to keep them away from the front line because it's only going to take pretty much one man pad to shoot them down. Like any one missile will shoot this out of the sky from any ground force or an aircraft. So <laughs> very, very fragile aircraft that you only really want to use in combat in a pinch. And then we have the M3A1 Bradley CFV, which is your standard recon Bradley with the TOW 2 with the Bushmaster. It's always nice to have some recon Bradleys. And we have the AA. So first of all, the National Guard Stinger, which is the Stinger squad that would normally have 60% accuracy, but with 40% accuracy. And this is absolutely criminal. In a case where you can remove the poor veterancy and push them up, obviously you're going to get better value for money and availability. But in a lot of cases, you're going to have these dotted all over the place and there's going to be plenty of these stingers that will not have the bonus of extra veterancy. So I am not so sure about taking these, especially with the state of AA being relatively inaccurate as it is because you have to still deal with ECM. So if you're already only firing at 40% accuracy and then you're adding the ECM debuff to that, like you're going to be barely hitting anything with these stingers. Whereas at least these stingers with 60% accuracy have a chance. Then we have the PVADs, the classic Vulcan minigun on top of that bad boy. Decent for dealing with helicopters. Can also be the extra damage you need to shoot down aircraft that get hit by big missiles. Then we have the OH-58CS, which is your air-to-air -air helicopter. Not as good as Soviet air-to-air -air helicopters because they have four health. Uh, only takes one missile to shoot one of these down, whereas you're going to need three missiles to shoot down an MI-24 AA. So <laughs> bear that in mind. Not generally something that is worth taking unless you have a specific strategy based around it, like using a lot of the helicopters at the start or something. And we have the M48A1 Chaparral, your standard uh, large anti-air unit for the US. 
um, other than the IHawk, of course. Uh, but the Chaparral, pretty standard, um, 3,700 meter range versus aircraft, always nice to have, and 3,175 meter range versus helicopters, so also good for shooting those down. Uh, just bear in mind that it has a, a salvo of four missiles, and it takes ages to reload, so it will fire off four with 55% accuracy per and then it will have to reload and in a lot of cases if they're on their own uh, they will probably not kill their target <laughs> and then get like rocketed down by a helicopter or something so make sure you probably bring these in in pairs that's probably a good a good shout just make sure you move them after they fire because they are very very vulnerable to artillery moving on to helicopters uh, we have the AH-1F Cobra Pretty good helicopter, honestly. The amount of rockets it's, it gets are incredible for destroying enemy infantry. Uh, and you get the 20 mil there as well, which can take down enemy helicopters uh, if it needs to. You're going to have to be pretty close to do that. But uh, regardless, this 20 mil, nothing to scoff at. And the amount of rockets they get, great for anti-infantry support. Then we have the AH-1F Tow Cobra. Not a massive fan of this, mainly because the helicopter needs to be deadly still in order for the ito to be useful uh, there's no moving uh, once this thing is fired or it'll just like go flying off into like the middle of nowhere which leaves the ah1f in a very vulnerable position for a very long time because not only does it take a while to stabilize before it fires it also then takes ages for the missile to, to land on target so um yeah be careful with your H1F Cobras or Tow Cobras if you decide to bring them in. Otherwise, just stick to your rockets. Like, this is a lovely rocket payload. Finally, we have the National Guard Apache. This is just a bad Apache, basically, that will never, ever, ever benefit from the a military police trait because it's in the air. Um, it does still have reasonably good accuracy. 56% uh, accuracy. Uh, from the Hellfire will be definitely enough to make that Hellfire scary. And I don't think that the accuracy on the 30 mil or the rockets is going to affect it too badly. It still gets its 20% ECM. So this is going to be still a beast in the sky, just a little bit less lethal. Finally, we have the Air Tab, and this starts with the F4E Phantom 2. So we've got the Phantom 2 here with 20% ECM. Uh, it's not as fast as something like the Eagle, but it has a decent payload. Uh, two AIM-9 Js and the Sparrows. The Sparrows, 7,775 meter range with 50% accuracy. AIM-9 Js, only 40% accuracy. And there's Phantoms with the four 227 kilogram payload and the two 340 kilogram napalm payload uh, the fact you get three of these is kind of nice I, I feel like these napalm rounds could be pretty good especially considering you still get the 20 percent ecm uh, for just like killing off a few different infantry units when you're in a pinch uh, or just like napalming a road and uh, kind of cutting off reinforcements for a little while if your enemy is low on aa and you can get deep enough uh, then we have the wild weasel uh, standard sort of seed aircraft comes with the strike you get five of these missiles so it's a big payload for an ECM aircraft and you get 40% ECM with 215 points four on a card this is actually a pretty damn good aircraft for its job you can have these hang about and just snipe multiple radar AA units if you know that they're there of course your opponent can turn off the radars uh, so do bear that in mind and they might turn it on as you turn away which causes like the radar aircraft like AA to fire at you while she can't fire back uh, you do need to be careful of that so like always keep them a little bit at a distance because you do have 4,400 meters range to work with moving on we have the F-111F with the eight rock eye cluster bombs 30% ECM uh, not a terrible aircraft it does kind of i mean it says it got exceptional agility it doesn't turn all that well and has to go pretty deep in order to 
get the cluster bombs on target in the first place. So you're going to find yourself flying over a lot of AA with these, which makes them somewhat suicide aircraft. And unless you're going to get some like really good value out of them by hitting some super heavy tanks, generally they're not as as worth to bring. However, in this case, there aren't many AT options, but we'll get to the best AT option most likely later on. We have the Eagle here, the F-15. The F-15C Eagle, uh, really, really good air-to-air. -air. Um, it, it's pretty peak, to be honest. Uh, 285 points, and you get two at the veteran, uh, veteran C. They have exceptional air optics, so they're going to spot enemy aircraft from a mile away. They have 40% ECM, which is really, really good. They have the Sparrows, same as the Phantoms. And then they also have the AIM-9, but these AIM-9s are way more accurate because they're AIM-9Ms. So at closer ranges, the AIM-9M can make a big difference in air-to-air -air engagements. Otherwise, you can just spam a bunch of Phantom 2s and they'll have somewhat the same effectiveness as the Sparrows of the Eagle. So there's something to bear in mind there because Phantom 2s, of course, are a lot cheaper. Uh, but you're going to probably need two of those to make the same effectiveness of it as an eagle so yeah bear that in mind moving on we do have the f-15e which is a new addition to warno and this comes with the main anti-tank armament of this air tab 350 points it's the strike eagle variant it comes with four laser guided bombs so four of these gbu 10s and these basically have 100 percent accuracy <laughs> as you can see so going to be very very useful for knocking out enemy heavy tanks do bear in mind though that they cost 350 points which i think is more expensive than any soviet tank uh, so you're going to have to get more than one kill with these in order to make them pay for themselves but they are relatively resilient because they have 40 percent ecm so you know it's definitely possible uh, for these to be extremely effective if you are using your seed effectively enough to shut down enemy radar AA when you bring these in. Uh, and that's your lot basically for this division and that was quite a lot to go through but mainly because of the uh, National Guard explanation but uh, let's just throw together a quick deck. Now we're probably going to need a field supply point just because there's going to be a lot of tanks in this division so making sure that those are repaired and rearmed is going to use up a lot of supply. Uh, other than that, we probably just want to make use of the big supply for artillery and then the smaller supply for the front line. That's basically what I'm going to be doing so far. I'm not sure if I'm going to bring in the Bradley here just yet or the Jeeps. So we'll move on to the infantry tab and come back to that later. Now here, taking the military patrol, military police patrol is going to be really important because you're going to want to be able to spread out the military police trait for all of your National Guard units. So this is a super important unit. The other one that I'm kind of considering is the leader because it's a 11 man leader that also provides the military police trait. On top of that, uh, we probably want to take the recoilless rifles here, also going to be useful for their military police trait. On top of that, I might bring some 50 cows because all of these only cost one activation point until the last one. We definitely want two squads of these fire team dragons kind of tempting potentially to upvet these but the availability loss there is definitely not worth it so we're going to take both of these in bradley's that's going to give us a really really solid core there otherwise none of these national guard units really seem worth it obviously i'm bringing lots of military police units but that's not for use with the infantry it's more for use with uh, tanks, artillery, anything else that I'm going to bring in that has need of the military police trait. Uh, engineers with the dragons are okay, but we're probably just going to stick to standard engineers and the engineers with flash launchers. We're definitely going to bring in the tow twos, so let's pop them in. And that's looking like a pretty solid infantry tab. I think what I need to do last is maybe bring in some more leaders. But the fire team leader is kind of trash, and the engineer leader, I guess that's probably going to be the only other option there. Unless we want to bring in the fire team leader, because that's going to be like a cheap infantry leader option. 
and then maybe we can make use of the Bradleys as well. Probably just going to bring them in with the Jeeps. Let's do that for now. And we have the artillery tab. So I think in this case, I'm going to go for both of the M270s because we are going to have a field supply point. And I'm almost tempted to bring in the M109 National Guard. The only trouble with doing that is I'm going to need a leader by them in order to negate their negative effects, which is obviously not so good. The other choice is mortars. I think I might do mortars actually. For the recon tab, we'll definitely bring the scouts. We're going to keep them out of this jeep just because... I mean, the jeep does have good stealth, so maybe it'll be useful. But I don't think it's necessary. Just taking them in this jeep that you can sell is probably a lot better. We'll bring the snipers. Always a very nice one to have. We'll bring in the Bradleys. You can actually get quite a lot of these Bradleys. And then I think I might bring in this Kiowa uh, with the exceptional optics. I think that could be really, really useful. Moving into the AA, we'll take the, st the normal Stingers. We'll take uh, Chaparrales. We'll probably take two cards of Chaparrales. The AA tab here is really expensive. We'll take two cards of Chaparrales and maybe a card of PVADs. Then we're going to take both cards or just the card of the National Guard Apaches and we'll bring one card of the H1Fs and then in the air tab gotta bring the Strike Eagles of course I'm probably gonna bring in the normal Eagles as well we'll bring in the seed that's gonna be super important and then we've got eight points left so where do we want to apply those eight points we didn't buy any tanks. <laughs> I skipped the tank tab. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I'm glad we noticed that. So this is a case where bringing in the Abrams with the National Guard is really, really good. And we can do something like this. I might actually take out this leader just because I'm going to do double leader in the tank tab. And I might go for the CEV. And then maybe a card of, of M1 IP Abrams as well. It might actually be better to have two cards of hmm, M1 IPs. No, I don't think so. I think that's fine. Like, as long as you get the field supply point down at the, the, the start, it should be okay. Just bear in mind, if you're going to play this in 1v1, I wouldn't recommend the field supply point, just because it's too many points at the start of the game that's probably going to get you overrun. In a team game, totally fine. Just make sure you don't get flanked by recon helicopters that spot it and take it out um, really easily. Um, so that is important to note. But otherwise, really looking forward to using the Strike Eagles. I'm going to leave it there. Let's just name this the 24th. Infantry Division. I'll close that and save. And I'll bring it up here. There we go. Beautiful. Really looking forward to trying this out, especially with like the M1 Abram National Guard spam with a couple of like leaders behind it. I think that could be really fun. Supported by like MRS rockets coming over the top. Big old push. You got wild weasels that can support the strike eagles. I really like the synergies in this deck, particularly between like the military police and the National Guard units and all that good stuff. So yeah, uh, looking forward to trying this out. That's it for now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.